Welcome back. We're here on another very beautiful uh, autumn day uh, to continue our gospel reflections. We're up to week 33 coming up. We can't believe it. Two more weeks in the calendar year for for uh, for us. Um, and we end with the Feast of Christ the King uh, the following weekend. And then Advent. Isn't that very exciting? All your shopping will probably be done by then, of course, and all of those things anyway. All right, so we're going to have Teresa read from Mark's Gospel. Uh, we remember that the end of this liturgical year will be um, Christ the King, and then we go on to year C. We're in year B now, right? Year C next year. So we end, we'll end our Mark things by and large here in the next two weeks. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth, to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we have these readings that, um, if you get into the imagery too much, uh, as beautiful, beautiful and vivid as it is, it can be very frightening. It's talking about the, the, the final days, the end of the days. No one knows the day or the hour. And as often as we say that, we probably even ten times more often hear of somebody who says they know when the end is coming. <laughs> you hear those kinds of things uh, from time to time, full of... Full of um, frightening um, and, and, and scary things. And we fall into those fearful things every once in a while. When I was a little boy, one of these readings came up, something or this one or, or one similar to it, and, and I don't remember anything else about this homily except for the, it was, um, I think it, it might have been Bishop Hickey or somebody who came to the parish in retirement or, uh, I can't remember, it wasn't Bishop Hogan, but anyway, the, whoever the preacher was, and I was a little kid, he said, are you ready? Would you be ready if, if the knock came at your door today? And the answer to, to that question from almost anybody to whom it's asked is no. Um, but the idea here is that we need to, to be ready. Lent, we have this, uh, often have this kind of uh, theme, stay awake, be alert, be ready, be vigilant. And those are things that if we work on becoming those things, then we're, we're, well, we're, well, we're, we're actually on the way. It's not a matter of us being perfect and getting it perfect and being right and being... It's a matter of us being vigilant, which is, I'm going to get ready. I'm going to be prepared and put my things in order. The Gospel today, uh, the Daily Mass this morning, on the day that we're doing this, was, was, was somewhat similar. I can't, uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but that was the idea was that um, we often spend time worried about things, or this is what I came to uh, when I was preaching, we often spend time worried about little things, accidental things. Uh, things that happen through the day. And, and there's good reason for us to be vigilant about those little things. But sometimes we get so consumed with little things that we forget about big things. Sometimes when people come to see me or talk to me or sometimes even when I go to confession and, and my confessor will do this with me, is that, that he'll ask me, uh, okay, you've, you've talked about the things that annoy you the most about you. 
Uh, now, what else is going on? Because we, we get focused on this, that worldly, accidental stuff, and we forget about the essential stuff. For any Christian person, we ought to ask ourselves, what am I, Lord, in my essential and fundamental relationship to, to you? What am I in that way? And that, Lord, is what matters to me. Well, we hear through the gospel, uh, especially in the, in the letters of, of Paul, um, this, this obsession he has with Christian unity, with, with unity in Jesus Christ, that there is no such thing as a faction. There's no, I'm a priest of Apollos, I'm a priest of Barnabas, I'm a priest of, so, of Paul, I'm a priest of um, Peter, I'm, I'm a priest, none of that. I'm only a priest of him uh, who is Jesus Christ our Lord. It, you hear it in modern age. I'm a John Paul II priest. Teresa and I were talking about this the other day. I'm a John Paul II priest. I'm a priest of Vatican II. I'm a priest of this. I'm a priest of this. I'm a priest who does this. And, and it's all, all uh, shameful when we do that. It's all something far less than what we're called to. I say that as the heater starts making strange noises behind me. So, we remember that, that it, it's, not, it's not insignificant, um, those little things that annoy you. Uh, you always have to conduct your life understanding that from this situation to the next, you're common to it. And when you see patterns of behavior developing, you, you're, you're responsible for them. Okay, every time I, I am in this situation, this happens. I'm common to them, so I need to take very uh, seriously my participation in those things that are that are keep seem to keep happening to the people in my life when I'm present there. It's amazing to us how often we forget that. Why does this keep happening to me? What's wrong with everybody? We say that all the time. It's kind of funny. It's like, oh, I'm there too. The one common thing that everything has is me. I'm common to them. Very important. Very important to to be vigilant on those points, but we also have to be vigilant on the on the those greater things, Lord, and and say okay. Um, Fulton Sheen used the example. They're smiling, and I'm not even looking at them. Uh, Fulton Sheen used the example of he goes my, my clothing, my station in life. Those things are accidental to me because I can change them. I, I could I could go get another job. I could I could go home and change my clothes. I could do that. But who I am, in in my relationship to Jesus Christ, whom I'm called to to whose life I'm called to live, uh, with the whole body of Christ. Um, and and with, with my brothers and sisters throughout the world who are different, that, that, that great life we're called to. Um, who I am in that relationship, that change, that make divine, that Lord sanctify, that Lord make me more you, make me more yours, make me a child of light, a child of God, that I might be an heir, that I might gain everything in Jesus Christ. That That is what we ought to kind of uh, focus on. So I would suggest, and, and I have suggested to others, that, that we look at our lives in two things. The, the accidental things that, that, I can, that, are, that, are, that are products of the time and place in which we live, um, our political affiliations are all of those accidental things. If I was born 100 years ago, they wouldn't be there, that kind of stuff. If I was born 100 years from now, it wouldn't matter who I voted for in 2016. None of those things. All accidental. And then you also focus on what things are essential. Um, a thistle cannot be a fig. He goes, you, you want the fi if a fig tree, what's essential to a fig tree is it produces rich and wonderful fruit. That it produces those wonderful fruit. And wh who are, what do we produce? who are branches of the vine, who is Jesus Christ. That is essential. That are the things we share with the people who lived in the past and the Christians who live in the future and um, all of those wonderful, uh, those things, who, who we are as essentially yours, uh, Lord. And those things are, are they kind of get lost. We kind of tend to get obsessed with these things.
and lose those things. Uh, so I think there's a good enough task there in the last couple of weeks uh, um, for us to kind of reflect and pray over and really remember that. And maybe you want to add it into your prayer life that you pray. Yes, I, I struggle with this, I struggle with this, I struggle with this, I struggle with this. But if I'm more you, if the Spirit is alive and thriving within the actions of the church and in me, then I will act accordingly. In, in, in the world in, in which I live. And may that, Lord, uh, take me over. Um, may that um, change me. May that transform me into, um, so that your work may continue through uh, your, your, your church, through your body on this, on, on this earth. That's the meaning of the words um, uh, on earth as it is in heaven, that, that we may become essentially yours. So there you have a wonderful week and uh, enjoy the beautiful autumn days and we will see you very soon.